the grim war on the Eastern Front, together with the military strategies of Stalin and his generals, putting civilians in harm's way and troops in impossible situations, more so than any other nation, meant that the Soviet Union lost 27 million people in World War II. This left a scar in surviving wives and husbands, parents and children, as well as in the demographic statistics for generations to come. Today, other factors are scarring the population pyramids of Russia. Scars that will be visible long after the losses of World War II is left to the demographic history books. This is the population pyramid of Russia in 1950. Russia had a young population and significantly more women than men. In the older cohorts, there are even twice the number of women than men. Among younger people, we can see the wave caused by the low fertility during World War II. Moving forward in time, we see the population aging and the number of older people growing. We see the dip in fertility during the late 1960s. And finally, when we enter the 1990s, the crashing fertility rate and the market left on the population pyramid. Even though the total population is bigger than ever now, the drop was so large that it is visible on this scale. The reforms of the 1990s was terrible for the health of the Russian population. Transitioning to capitalism by rapid privatization and reductions in public spending, however good intended or not they were, created unemployment and reduced the life expectancy of the country by several years. Please note that the y-axis in this graph starts at 50, to show the changes more clearly. The drop was especially large for men, where alcoholism levels and all negative health impacts that comes with it surged. We will come back to this in a little while. Today, close to 2 million people die every year in Russia. Here, we visualize them with 400 blocks. Every block represents 5,000 deaths, give or take. As in most nations on Earth, outside the poorest regions, non-communicable diseases dominate the causes of death, here marked in blue. The biggest killer, cardiovascular diseases, including ischemic heart disease and stroke, account together for close to half of all deaths in Russia. A multitude of different types of cancer is number three on the list, with close to 16%, around 300,000 people. At the same time, more people are living longer lives, and 4.6% have Alzheimer's disease as the main cause of death. Drugs and alcohol stand at just over 2%. But here we can see a difference between the sexes. While drugs and alcohol account for under 1%, of the death of women, it is more than three times as likely to cause the death of men. The next category is forming under the broad umbrella of accidents, here marked in red. Road injuries, falls and drowning are accounting for smaller shares of the population. But here we also have another category with great discrepancy between men and women, self-harm, suicide. The rate for females is just 0.87%, while for men it is close to 4%. Overall, the rate is at 2.4%. Interpersonal violence stands at 1.2%. The last category is the communicable diseases, viruses and other spreadable diseases from human to human, here marked in white. As in most nations, outside the absolute poorest, and the nations in the tropical regions, it's a small category, making up just over 4% of the deaths in Russia. Lower respiratory infections, such as pneumonia, accounts for half of these deaths, while tuberculosis stands for half a percent. HIV AIDS accounts for 1%. The problem with statistics like this is that most people die in the older age cohorts, and they therefore have a greater weigh on the scale. This we can see 
if we just take a look at the deaths impacting people aged 70 or older. Now, the non-communicable diseases account for close to all deaths recorded. Alzheimer's doubles its share to over 8%. But if we want to look at the causes of death, reducing the number of years alive the most, we can look at the age group 15 to 49 years old. Of course, here we are talking about a much smaller share of the total number of deaths, but the causes shift drastically. Drugs and alcohol in that group grows to 8%, four times as high as for the population as a whole. Road accidents increase to 6%. Self-harm to over 10%. And violence to 5 Non-communicable diseases account for 13%, and HIV AIDS for half of those deaths. The 2% of all deaths attributed to drugs and alcohol mentioned earlier. It's somewhat of a misleading number. Russia has one of the highest alcohol consumptions in the world, and the situation reached alarming rates in the late 1990s, early 2000s. Alcohol, alongside other lifestyle choices, such as use of tobacco, poor diet, and the lack of physical activity, contributed to many deaths counted as cardiovascular diseases, cancers, suicide, violence, road injuries, and other accidents. The grim health situation of the 1990s is long gone for Russia. The first decade and a half of the 21st century brought a new confidence to the nation and an economic injection needed to finance a healthcare system that could handle the challenges of the Russian society. The positive changes have brought an increase in life expectancy for both men and women, even though the large gap between the sexes persists. The fertility rate has also increased slightly, broadening the base of the youngest age groups in the Russian population pyramid. The negative health effects of drugs, alcohol and diet has indeed decreased since the start of the new millennium, partly due to governmental policies targeting the problem. But since 2014, many of these developments have stalled. The increase focused on defense spendings from the government and an economic downturn caused by falling energy prices and sanctions from the West following the annexation of Crimea has led to cuts in healthcare spendings. This alongside the low fertility rate we covered in part one is the base for the demographic struggle Russia will continue to battle in the coming decades and the topic for the next video.